Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. In today's video, we're going to do uh, do something that you guys have been requesting for a while. I haven't done any type of like major vlogging or speed testing vlogs in a while, and everybody's been asking for a T-Mobile millimeter wave vlog or speed testing. So I went ahead and I did that for you guys with this video. So in this round of testing, we're going to be doing this with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G. I am testing in the Cleveland area market. And this is one of the five major millimeter wave markets that T-Mobile has. I do want to start by saying that I did test this part of the network last year and results were not very good. So we're going to compare today currently to what it is, to what it was before, and we're going to see if it improved any. About 10 months ago, it was pretty bad. It was basically awful. Let's see if it got any better. All of that starts now. All right, so site number one is a, um, I would say a business district. Also, um, you know, there's a lot of bars, there's a lot of restaurants, there's an open market area with a lot of, you know, customers and, and ongoers, a lot of walkers, patrons on outdoor patios. I noticed that there's quite a bit of parking as well, so I know there's a lot of people there. It's a high traffic area. There's a lot of autos and stuff like that on the other side of the street. There's also that massive apartment complex, so that obviously is going to offer a lot of you know, network traffic. Anyways, the cell site itself is a rooftop based site. All T-Mobile millimeter wave sites are actually uh, positioned this way. Um, let's say it's about 100 feet up or so. It's about, I'm about 500 feet away in line of sight from the location where the note is positioned. I'm utilizing the Note 10 Plus 5G connecting to N260, which is 39 gigahertz frequency. And, uh, you know, T-Mobile has, I believe, four channel, 100 megahertz, uh, you know, bandwidth of this uh, spectrum. Uh, this site is greatly improved compared to last year when I actually tested it. Uh, previously, I could hardly get connected to it. It was really unreliable and I couldn't hold the signal. So uh, that's obviously been, been fixed. Uh, it actually holds pretty good. It's not, you know, the greatest, but it, it, it's good in my, in my experience. It, it got better, that's for sure. Uh, the best download speeds I saw at this particular site was uh, 1000 megabits per second, about a gig speed. I got some other downlink speeds of like 500, 400 megs. I did get like an 800 and 900 when I tested it. There were a couple of duds. There were a couple of tests where, you know, I only got like 100 megs or 30 megs. Uh, but I mean, it was mixed results. The uplink uh, that I saw, the upload speeds was very average, quite pedestrian actually, but um, you know, it's just LTE. So not really much, uh, you know, surprise there. Uh, remember, N260 is non-standalone 5G technology, so it does, you know, rely on LTE as its core. But again, like I was saying, in my opinion, the site did improve dramatically, with the exception of a, you know, a couple of duds. When I ran the test a few times, I did get some really nice scores. I did get some really nice values. Uh, so I was happy to see that they actually fixed the problem, because when I tested this last year, I mean, I think I got one test that actually you know, connected and ran, you know, the, the NR. So I was happy to see that a lot of that connectivity issue was resolved. And I was happy to see that a lot of the issues were rectified and uh, mitigated. So good job by T-Mobile, actually. I didn't think they were going to get back to these sites and do any upgrading. So I was happy to see this. And, um, you know, as you could tell, here it is. I'm definitely in line of sight. It is there on that rooftop site over there by that apartment. And I was happy to see that it did get better. Now, what I'm going to do on this next site is actually it's the same location, essentially, just on the other side of the building. So that's what I'm going to transition to. I'm just going to uh, test basically a different node in the same vicinity. So this is the opposite side of that rooftop site. This is cell site number two for this testing. The other side of the same roof uh, pointed towards a hospital, actually. Uh, here's a close up of the hardware. You guys will see. I'll try to zoom in here. That small little square uh, right smack dab in the middle of those other antennas. Those other antennas are probably mid-band antennas, so they're probably, you know, something like PCS or AWS, so band 2, band 4, band 66. Um, you know, the smaller antennas are what, what are used for higher frequency spectrum, just like what we have here with the N260 uh, with the 39 gigahertz. So they use these smaller antennas. Um, you can usually notice it, you know, the, the differences in the sizes. Anyways, distance-wise, I was probably just a couple of hundred feet away. I was in line of sight to the uh, the node, and it is about 100 feet up. Um, similar performance to the other site that I just tested, 
seven eight hundred megabits per second uh, there were a couple of duds here as well the latency was good for the most part i mean in terms of lt standards but again it's not real 5g it really is nsa non-standalone so it utilizes lte for its core operations so our expectations should be tempered but again in my opinion you know when i look at you know a benchmark of last year's testing it was really bad and i i had trouble connecting to this site as well so it looks like they fixed whatever configurations whatever optimizations had to be made when i tested it about nine or ten months ago these sites were really hard to connect to i couldn't really hold the signal and when i did the speeds were really bad so it looks like they fixed a lot of that and in my opinion like i said these are good these are good speeds 800 megabits on the downlink is fine uh it's not as fast and reliable as verizon's verizon's got a lot more invested into their millimeter wave at this point it's been more of a focus of their network operations for now and uh, T-Mobile's kind of put this on the back burner for the most part, but it looks like they have come back to these sites and done some upgrading because it was not this good before, which I'm happy to report and I'm glad to see it. Now you'll see here in this test, you know, it's only getting like 30 megabits per second and it is connected to 5G NR. So, you know, like I said, I don't know what the cause is. I don't know if there's interference. I don't know if there's, you know, the positioning of the, the antennas itself. I don't know. Um, it could be a number of factors going on here um so there still are some really crappy speed tests but uh things that improve at site number two all right now here's cell site number three this is in downtown cle this is actually at progressive field where the baseball games are played by the cleveland professional team uh, it's a high volume area there's many bars tons of baseball fans walking around uh walkers there's a lot of traffic from autos etc i'm about 500 feet away from the site and I would say it's also about 100 feet up. So what we're noticing is a trend that all of these seem to be on rooftop sites. I did not, I don't know of any T-Mobile millimeter wave sites that are on anything but rooftops. So uh, downlink speeds, I was seeing like 600 megs uh, on the downlink. Uplink was like in the high teens. So pretty similar to what I saw with the other testing. It's all right. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not great. You know, the uplink speed, of course, we like to see it a little bit higher. You know, it's something that wireless providers are struggling with, you know, uh, some other tests I got, you know, like 150 megabits per second. Uh, this this site is actually probably more challenging because of the buildings in the area. So I'm not surprised that it scored a little bit lower in terms of downlink speed and it had a harder time uh, propagating the signal. And uh, one of the things I noticed when I compare this technology and what T-Mobile is doing it's very different than what Verizon, you know, shows. Verizon, you don't even have to be in line of sight and you'll get some pretty incredible speeds. And that's because of the investment into the technologies they have in like beam forming and range extenders with repeater technology. Uh, T-Mobile simply does, doesn't have that yet. Uh, do they decide to use it in the future? Uh, they should. Uh, they probably will. I mean, we'll see in the future. But, um, you know, this it's good to see that things have improved. Uh, this site actually turned out pretty nice. All right, now let's transition over to cell site number four. I'm at the Cleveland State University Athletics Field. Uh, this is where uh, the Cleveland State University Vikings uh, play soccer, baseball, um, you know, sports events and things like that. Uh, the note is actually pointed. One of them at the police district, which is where I'm standing. So that one's pointed at me. The other one is actually pointing at the, uh, the field where the fan seating area is. So makes total sense i i totally get it downlink here when i started the test this actually was the first test that delivered a uh, similar performance to what verizon uh and at&t are getting for their millimeter wave so uh this was the first site where i got very steady one plus gigabit speed when it came to the downlink so i was really happy to finally kind of get that on a consistent level uh the uplink actually was you know kind of like in the high teens so that didn't really change that was pretty consistent throughout all of my testing the latency you know in the teens um also um i, I saw like you know 18 milliseconds 17 milliseconds pretty much throughout uh probably the best configured site that i tested in all my rounds of testing on this day so i don't know if it's the newest site i don't know if it's just had the most optimization or you know whichever engineering team did it i think they just did a really good job i was happy to see that um it was really nice you know and and you could tell that 
based on its positioning and based on the configuration however they did it this is actually going to help people like this is going to be useful like people sitting in the stands people at the university that are outside and walking if they connect to this it's going to be a nice experience they'll probably say wow this is wow my phone's flying right now right they could download an app uh they could send or receive a file very quickly you know well you know that's that's one of the things that we've kind of been wanting is we wanted to see this transcendental uh change to 5g networking so yeah this one was pretty good and i was very happy to see this one all right let's go ahead and do the final test site so this one cell site number five kind of a strange placement i picked this one only because it was kind of at the end of my circle my route uh it's actually kind of off csu campus so the other one was smack dab right in the middle this one's kind of off by a few blocks uh the the one node was pointing towards the interstate. Another node was kind of towards some neighborhoods. Uh, this site highlights the line of sight requirement for T-Mobile's millimeter wave. It's really, really sensitive. It's very, very directional. If you are not in line of sight of T-Mobile's 5G millimeter wave, it's not very good. Uh, another rooftop site here in this example, uh, again, like I said, if you're not in line of sight, you're not going to get good performance. And this was on display here with this test. In terms of the downlink, I got a lot of duds in this testing. Mostly single digits on the worst ones. The uplink was pretty good, actually. It was in the 20, uh, 20 megabit per second range. I lost 5G signal, actually, and I could not get it back. I did get it back, I think, later, but it was kind of slow. Uh, anyways... What I've kind of noticed in all of my testing was my phone was actually starting to get hot at this point from the testing. Uh, you know, something that I've noticed is that I think, you know, popping in and out of 5G and LTE and then just the connection itself, I, I just noticed that the battery life was not good. And actually, generally speaking, and this is just something I've noticed with my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, battery life with my T-Mobile SIM inside of the phone is really bad. I get about 4.5 hours of screen on time with my T-Mobile SIM in it. With my Verizon SIM in it, I get about six hours of screen on time and AT&T is right around the same. So uh, this site, you know, when I, I look at the, you know, testing, I was really only a couple hundred feet away. I was pretty close. I was across the street from the node and I was not very far. And I, I try to get in line of sight in it too. I moved around. I try to put myself in a position where I would connect pretty clean. Uh, I even tried flashing airplane mode, you know, and I walked around and I looked and I tried. Um, I tried moving away. I tried a different direction, you know, and it just didn't happen. I'll continue to do that here in the video. And you guys can take a look at me trying to figure out what's going on. But I just could not get the signal back. Uh, anyways, here's my conclusion from Millimeter Wave 5G from T-Mobile. It is clearly a work in progress. There are some good results. There are some not so good results. And honestly, there are some real duds here. At this point in time with this technology for T-Mobile, it's it's really directional. Uh, you really have to be in line of sight. It is very limited in terms of range. Uh, it lacks the speeds of other carriers like AT&T and Verizon when it comes to their millimeter wave technology. The latencies are really no different than LTE. Obviously, it is non-standalone, so we're not too surprised. But I've noticed that with Verizon's uh, ultra wideband, I do see better latencies than over traditional LTE. So whatever Verizon's doing seems to really be paying off for them and the performance shows. It is a much improved uh, performance compared to last year's testing. So I do want to give T-Mobile props for tending to this technology and not abandoning it and uh, kind of figuring things out and making it a little bit better. I do still think it needs to improve, but it is encouraging, and I'm glad to see that it has gotten better. However, it's it's not really as good as its competition. So it, what AT&T is doing is really, really good. Uh, I'll be doing some of that testing in the near future. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know. Give me a comment if you do want to see AT&T millimeter wave testing, because I can definitely do that for you guys. And, um, you know, Verizon is is leaps and bounds ahead of T-Mobile when it comes to this technology. So I just wanted to close it out by saying that. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it for this testing. I just like to cap this off and cap this off and say that I think uh, T-Mobile did improve some things. I know Verizon's way ahead with beamforming and repeater tech, 
and uh you know they got double or triple the range and they obviously don't require a line of sight anymore verizon is winning in this area but i do like what i'm seeing from t-mobile the improvements are great and i'm encouraged to see what they do moving forward if you guys appreciated this video and enjoyed it and found it informative and you liked it please do rate this video give it a give it a thumbs up share it to all your socials um you know instagram twitter uh facebook whatever that'd be amazing thank you so much if you're new first time here consider subscribing activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the smt and uh do check out some of these other videos i put here for you guys to check out also in the description box we got a link to the patreon page at snake at Sneed tech twitter handle we also have periscope lives that we do as well as other uh social media interactions and don't forget to check out the audio-only version of the podcast. We're on all your favorite podcast applications. We're on Google. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Breaker, Pocket Cast. We're all over the place, all the major podcast platforms. Do check that out. Uh, thank you so much uh, for doing that. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm the SMT. I hope you all have a great rest of the day, and we will see you all on the next video. Peace.